Ben, uh, um, uh, good to see you. I, I understand um, you've got some uh, interesting perspective on uh, what's going on with um, uh, different types of sunscreens, the U.S. vis-a-vis yeah. -vis Europe, I got, this, et I got an article off Fox News here mm -hmm. that's blaming the FDA. This is for by Dr. Renata H. Mullen. Mm. She's blaming the FDA for skin cancer because they're not releasing sunscreens that are strong enough or well-rounded enough to protect us from the sun. Now, I got a couple problems with this. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the sun and sunscreens. There's, there's basically uh, three, three major types of rays that come off of the sun, mm. ultraviolet rays come off the sun. They label them UVA, UVB, and UVC. Have you heard of these terms? UVA, UVB, and UVC. Well, I've these, read the uh, article different that, that you have, wrote and posted uh, that we have on Critical Health News. So if anybody wants to read I, up on that, sorry, they can check the article. I wrote an article on that. Um, so you have UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA, you can think of as your aging ray. Mm. UVB, you can think of as your burning ray. And UVC, you can think of as your cancer ray. Now there's overlap, and that's somewhat simplistic, but that's a, so that, that's a general rule of thumb, aging, burning, and cancer, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Most sunscreen products will block UVB, mm. but they don't block UVA. In fact, the typical sunscreens, not sunblocks, sunblocks will block everything. Mm. It's an important distinction that we don't really hear made a lot. There's sun blocks, which are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, right, right. and these will block everything. But sunscreens, as, as opposed to sun blocks, they're distinguished from sun blocks, sunscreens only block UVB for the most part. There are some sunscreens that will block UVA, but those are problematic. And according to this doctor, the fact that most sunscreens are only blocking UVB is one of the reasons why we have a lot of skin cancer. I got a couple. I got a couple problems with that, and I'll tell you why. Number one, UVB is extremely important. This burning ray is also the vitamin D ray, and when you use a UVB block, you're going to be blocking the vitamin D, or at least the vitamin D production. Vitamin D actually uh, is made in the skin as a part of a chemical reaction, as the end result of a chemical reaction between the sun and a magical substance in the skin. You know what that magical substance is in the skin that gets turned into vitamin D? No. Cholesterol. I, th I was, I was going to guess that, but I, I, I yeah. It's so okay. funny because vitamin D is like a type of cholesterol. <laughs> right, it's right. It's a tweaked version of cholesterol. Everything good is a type of cholesterol, basically. It's chole it's, you could, I think of it as like a derivative mm. of cholesterol. It's like right. a, a, a manipulated version of cholesterol. The sun hits cholesterol, it, a chemical reaction occurs, and you get vitamin D. The problem mm. you wear a sunscreen, the UVB block, is you don't get that vitamin D. So number one, by using a sunscreen, you're going to be uh, UVB blocking sunscreen. You're not going to be getting your vitamin D. But number two, as this uh, doctor points out, is you are exposing yourself to, vitamin, to UVA. When you, and even worse, if you're blocking the burning from occurring by using a UVB, you tend to be out in the sun right. longer. Exactly. So now you're exposed to UVA longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. according to the, the medical community, the medical model, the dermatologists say, well, well, you should be using a UVA blocker. Well, there's a problem here. Mm. And the problem mm. is, is while UVB uh, sunscreens are toxic chemicals, they're mm. cytotoxic, they kill cells. And yes, I know that you're using a small concentration, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, the higher your SPF, the more, uh, more UVB, uh, the more UVB chemical you're putting on your skin. Mm. So you really want to keep the SPF down and reapply. That's a whole nother issue. Uh, yeah. But the point is, is that the more UVB uh, protection you get, the more likely you are to expose yourself to UVA unless you use a UVA chemical. The problem with the UVA chemicals are, or UVA blocking chemicals is, those are even more toxic than the UVB blocking chemicals. Mm. Those are right. super toxic. UVB blocking chemicals, those are, to those are toxic. The most common one is called octomethoxycinamate, also mm. known as octanoxate. And you should always be an ingredient deck reader, by the way. You'll see these called out on your ingredient deck. Uh, and those are toxic. Optomethoxycinamate is toxic. There's no doubt about it. You don't want to drink it. You wouldn't want to ingest it because it will kill you if you ingested enough of it. But the UVA blockers, those are really toxic. Those are in in the most microscopic concentrations because of their high toxicity. So the real answer to skin cancer, the real way to protect yourself from skin cancer, is to make sure you're taking care of your nutrients. 
Cancer is cancer, whether it's in the skin or it's inside the body. And yes, it's true. On the skin, you have the added predisposing factor of the sun. The sun's being very stimulating. So that if you're destabilized because of malnutrition, or you're missing nutrients, your skin is malnourished, there's, your body's malnourished, and then your skin is malnourished, you're going to be more, more likely to have a problem with the sun. But the real answer to protection from cancer is make sure you're taking care of your nutrition. Mm. Number one, making sure, making sure you're taking care of your nutritional supplements, making sure you're getting vitamin C and vitamin E and plant nutrients and uh, pigments and the reds and the blues and the greens. All these get deposited in your skin to protect your skin from the sun. Also, make sure that you're staying away from food toxins, from food allergens, from sugar, all of which can also uh, predispose the skin to being more uh, fragile and more, uh, uh, more prone towards uh, developing cancer, whether it's on the skin or inside the body. So really the answer to protecting the skin is not topical, it's internal. Yes, you can support the internal milieu, the, the internal nutritional uh, status of the body by using a sunscreen, by using a sunblock, but the real solution to protection from cancer is not topical skin care, it's making sure you're taking care of your nutrition, making sure you're getting nutrients, and making sure you're staying away from problem foods, mm. especially if you have a digestive problem or food intolerances, staying away from those kinds of foods. There's certain nutrients that you can take, and it turns out that the eyes are very similar to the skin. The, it's supposed to say both the same type of tissue, the tissue that lines the eyes and the tissue, the skin tissue. It's called epithelial tissue. And just like you can take nutrients to protect your eyes, for example, from longevity, your Occutive or Vision FX, those same nutrients will actually protect your skin as well. And you can test this for yourself. If you find that you're burning readily, you're one of those folks that burns in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, try taking Occutive or try taking Vision FX or using uh, pigments from veggies, uh, uh, braising your broccoli or your Brussels sprouts or your tomatoes or your carrots in uh, uh, some kind of butter or, or coconut oil or lard or some kind of oil. You want to stay away from vegetable oil. Stick to butter if you can. And uh, the pigments will get released from the, uh, from the vegetables. They'll go into the butter and you'll get this wonderful sun protective substance that's super delicious tasting and it'll protect your skin from the sun, it'll protect your eyes from the sun as well. So use nutrition once again to protect yourself from the sun. And then as, as a secondary prevention, make sure you're using a sun block, not a sun screen. And if you have no choice, you know, you, you, a sun block isn't available and you have to use a sunscreen, use a low SPF sunscreen mm. and reapply. Mm. Sunscreen SPFs are not measurements of how much stronger a sunscreen is, they're measurements of how long they last. So that if you're using an SPF 50, that just lasts longer, has more, has longer sun protection than an SPF of 10. At any given moment, it's not like that if you're getting a, a stronger or more potent chemical, it's just a matter of duration. But what you are getting is you're exposing your skin to a lot more chemistry, a lot more toxic chemicals. So if you're not going to be out in the sun for all day, or you're not going to be out in the sun for five or six hours, use an SPF 15, use an SPF of 10. And if you're gonna stay out in the sun longer, reapply it. Instead right. of exposing your skin or forcing your skin to be uh, to have to deal with toxic chemicals, just keep reapplying it. And then also stay away from products that have sunscreens built into them so that you're gonna be using a sunscreen even when you don't need it. Sunscreens have to be respected because they're not pretty chemicals. So use a sunblock if you can. If you need to use a sunscreen, use a sunscreen, but just get it off your skin when you don't need it. Use a low SPF and use nutrition as your primary source of sun protection. Well, having, uh, having been a surfer since a little kid, I've uh, had my fair experience of uh, you know, trying to fend off the, the, the rays of the sun. And uh, you know, my friends, have, we've always shared a concern about, uh, about skin cancer in particular. Uh, it's a... Uh, it's a hobby where there really isn't a lot you can do. You can't really wear a hat. I mean, in most conditions, you know. Use zinc oxide. Do you remember Zinca? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Use, use zinc oxide and then, yeah. you know, get it off your skin. You, don't, you know, it is a little bit uncomfortable. It's white. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. But it's way better than, any, uh, than chemical sunscreens. And, and the reason chemical sunscreens are so popular is because they are lighter and more convenient. But you really, you're playing, it's really not right to put that on your skin. And on top of that, check this out. The sun deactivates sunscreens. Hmm. So the longer you're wearing a sunscreen, the less active it's going to be. So 
you know, there's so many problems. You're putting a toxic chemical on your skin. The sun is deactivating it. Uh, there's really, to me, the way I look at it, don't burn. You definitely don't want to burn. Mm. But if you can avoid wearing a sunscreen, avoid wearing a sunscreen. And if you can't avoid it, get it off as soon as possible. It's, it seems like there's a certain logic that, uh, that we're sort of one, – one has to sort of realize that we have increasing rates of uh, skin cancer and increasing rates of the use of sunscreen. So Clearly, there's something wrong, right? There's obviously uh, – there's, a, there's a, disconnect a disconnect there. The technology is, isn't fulfilling the role that we're uh, uh, expecting it to fulfill. And yeah, because, you, because we're nutritionally deficient. We're not supplementing. We're eating all kinds of crappy food. And then we go out in the sun and we wear a sunscreen and we expect that to protect us from the sun. And then we have dermatologists telling us, oh, just wear a sunscreen and don't worry about what you eat. And don't worry about your vitamin C and don't worry about your vitamin A. You know, when you eat – when you supplement with vitamin A – it goes into your digestive system, it goes in your blood, and then it goes into your skin, mm. and it gets stored in your skin. By the way, vitamin E is one of the most phenomenally sun-protective vitamins there is. Uh, I remember my father telling stories about uh, the days when they didn't have sunscreen, and they would go to the beach and get these horrendous sunburns. But I also wonder as well how much of a role of uh, pre prevention that actually played. I mean, if... 30 minutes in the sun and you're starting to burn, it sends you back to the shade. That's a heck of a lot different than not feeling that effect and staying out for four hours right. expecting to uh, right. uh, to not exactly suffer right. any ill you may be, effects. You may be protecting yourself from burning, but as was pointed out by this by this article and just common sense, you're now exposing yourself to more UVA. Mm. You're not getting the burning right, but the burning would ordinarily tell you to get the heck out of the sun. Now you don't have that signal, so you stay out of the sun longer. Right, right. Uh, now, Ben, there's, there's also, you've mentioned the toxicity in the various sunscreens, but aren't some of those chemicals actually now known to be carcinogenic? You know, carcinogenesis is really an interesting idea, and we should mm -hmm. probably do a video on carcinogenesis, because right. carcinogenesis, there's only one thing that causes cancer, and that's a lack of oxygen at the most fundamental level. But there are lots of chemicals that put a stress on the cell, and enough of a stress on a cell to deprive that cell of oxygen. So there's lots of chemicals that do that. Pretty much any toxin is going to be carcinogenic, lead towards cancer. But the specific cause of cancer is cellular duress, mm. specifically cellular suffocation. This is something that Otto Warburg, I think we talked about, we may have talked about this on a video before. This is yeah. something that Otto Warburg talked about in, 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 uh, almost 100 years ago, this idea that uh, at the fundamental level, what causes cancer is a lack of oxygen at the level of the cell. Now, there are chemicals that can induce a, a, a lack of oxygen or it can make it difficult for cells to process or utilize oxygen. And in that sense, they're carcinogenic and those are said to be secondary causes of cancer. But there's only one primary cause of cancer and that is a, a lack of oxygen at the level of a cell. When a cell doesn't have oxygen, it, it, ha has, to, uh, it has to go uh, use a form of energy production that is dependent on sugar rather than oxygen. Oxygen burning is a very advanced form of energy production. Right. When a right. cell doesn't have oxygen, it has to go back into a primitive form of energy production, which depends mm. on sugar. So right. that's really the cause of cancer. Is a, and this is something that Dr. Otto Warburg talked about. It's a, a suffocation issue, which is kind of a cellular duress. Cancer is really caused. But, and by the way, nobody. When we think of cancer, we tend not to think of really what cancer is. We, th we tend to think of it at the level of the organ. We call it breast cancer, or liver cancer, or bone cancer. We don't really understand that there's no such thing as breast cancer. There's breast cell cancer. And there's no such thing as liver cancer. There's liver cell cancer. Mm. Or bone cancer, there's bone cell cancer. In other words, the cancer is not occurring at the level of the organ. It's occurring at the level of the cell. And it's the end result of a cell that is just has at its wit's end. Yeah. It is so toxic and so nutritionally deprived and suffocated. Really, number one cause, the, the real reason is suffocation. It can't utilize oxygen, so now it has to become a sugar burner. Mm -hmm. And sugar mm -hmm. burning is a very inefficient form of energy, and that makes cancer cells extremely inefficient. That forces them to divide very rapidly, and that's really what causes cancer. So yeah, their uh, sunscreen chemicals can be said to be secondary causes of cancer, but at the primary level, it's always a lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. I, I seem to remember reading uh, people uh, uh, some, somewhere, uh, somebody had a recipe for making your own sunscreen. Zinc uh, oxide. Out of, out of zink, exactly. Out of zinc oxide. Yeah, zinc oxide powder, put it in, uh, 
put it in your favorite lotion or cream or uh, put it in jojoba oil, which is a nice oil, and stir it around. It doesn't, it doesn't suspend very well, so you got to stir it around, and you're going to have to rub it on and use it quickly. You can't really store it because it kind of sinks. Zinc oxide is a mineral, and it sinks to the bottom of whatever solution or, or oil that you're using. But if you stir it around, you can just apply it that way. But there's no real need to do it because there's so many zinc oxide products out there. Mm. Well, I think if, if there's any one major takeaway, there's lots of good information that you've just provided us with, but the one major takeaway is don't think that you're protecting yourself when you're putting on sunscreen. There's a, um, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're actually increasing the risk because you're no longer aware of... Uh, and also photo damage, too. Even if you're not increasing the risk of cancer, you're also increasing mm -hmm. the risk of wrinkles and thinning skin and mm -hmm. collagen damage, photo damage, uh, because UVA is really the photo damage ray. So yeah, you may be protecting yourself from burning, but you're also depriving yourself of vitamin D and you're exposing yourself to more ultraviolet A, which will predispose you to perhaps cancer and also certainly to accelerated aging of the skin. Oh, awesome, Ben. Uh, look forward to doing this again. Uh, Thank you, Chanti. Uh